Greetings, friends. This is Survival Doc. Well, today we see happening what I predicted was going to happen back in the 1980s. That was when I saw this coming. All right, and that is the devaluation of the dollar um, and the eventual destruction of the value of the dollar through inflation. All right, I've made videos on this before. There's a chapter on my website, the very last chapter on my website, survivaldoc.com. Uh, um, on this topic, uh, that article on survivaldoc.com was written uh, 10 years ago. I haven't necessarily kept that article updated, but the basic information there um, about everything that's happened today with the dollar and with, um, with money, currencies, the basic information there is still valid. Uh, and if you want just a good background on the basics uh, of uh, what uh, currency devaluation is um, and what um, a currency collapse is, and in particular what inflation is, um, I refer you to uh, one of my past videos or to uh, the chapter, the last chapter on my website, survivaldoc.com. Um, I've been talking about this subject for years, um, and uh, as I said, even back in 1980s is when I saw this uh, coming, uh, not because um, I'm uh, a great, uh, intel so intelligent, a great thinker, uh, but because I've always had um, a talent for finding the truth, I believe. Um, I've always had, throughout life, you have this, the people who uh, give you uh, nuggets of truth, and then you have people who give you nuggets of just pure BS. Uh, and of course, most of the information we get is just pure BS. Um, and um, I have been able to discern the truth, uh, I believe, because I have, um, I have special antennas that tell me when someone's giving me BS and when someone's giving me the truth. Uh, and back in the 80s, um, I read a lot of information from economists that were talking about um, what's going to happen uh, when the baby boomers uh, retire. And uh, I'm a baby boomer myself. I was born in 1956, so I'm right there in the, in the baby boomer uh, area. Um, I'm at the age now to where um, close to retirement, I'm in my 60s, um, and um, I'm close to the age where I will be uh, using my Social Security retirement. Uh, and at the same time, every single uh, day, there are literally thousands of baby boomers who are retiring right now. All right, now the basic problem is for all these years, baby boomers um, and other Americans have been paying into the social security system thinking that when we retired there was going to be um, a retirement fund there for us that we, we could live off of. All right, and what I learned back in the 80s from uh, reading some of these economists is no, it's not going to be there uh, when we retire. Or it's, it's, it'll be there for a short period of time but it's not going to be there like we expected. All right, and what I'm talking about is um, baby boomers, of course, are this large group of people who were born right after World War II, all right? And during, uh, initially, when we entered the workforce, uh, we represented a huge workforce with a lot of people who were paying into Social Security, all right? Now, if the government had been responsible, um, which, of course, no government ever is. Uh, there's no entity that I know of that is more irresponsible than government. Uh, and the larger, the more powerful the government, the more irresponsible they are. And of course, the United States is at the top of that heap. And um, if the governments had been honest and responsible, they would have been putting this money aside that baby boomers and others paid into Social Security knowing that one day you're going to need that money to pay uh, baby boomers their retirement. 
all right? And anyone could see this coming, um, and when it was explained to me, I just saw it as clear as a bell, and I couldn't understand why everyone couldn't see it. Um, and that is, the um, government um, has put away none of the money that, that uh, we put into Social Security. None of it has gone into any type of investment or savings at all. It's all been spent by the government. And the idea is that um, each generation, when they pay the Social Security, they will be paying you know, for the previous generation who's retiring. Their retirement would be paid for by the current uh, people paying into the system. There is just one big problem with that, of course, and that's baby boomers. Uh, this large group of people, when we entered the workforce, were paying this huge amount of money into uh, the government. All right, and the government just loved that because they just gave these politicians all of this money that they could spend, you know, buying votes and putting them, buying their way, you know, back into office. All right, and um, so they spent the money. Uh, they, uh, you know, they knew at that time, well, I'm going to be retired by the time, you know, the cows come home, and I'm not going to have to deal with it. You know, we'll let someone else deal with that uh, down the road. And so they've been kicking this problem down the road all this time. But what we have is we have this large group of people paying into the system who are expecting when they retire, they're expecting to get uh, this money back, you know, for their retirement to live on. Uh, you know, when they're no longer working again. All right, the problem is with that system where that's paid for, not where the retirement's paid for, not by the people um, who are paid into their retirement in the past, but paid for by the people who are paying into their retirement right now. The problem is when the baby boomers start retiring, then you're going to get this large group of people who has been paying into Social Security for all of those years, now all of a sudden they're gonna start withdrawing money out instead of putting money in, they're gonna start getting their social security uh, retirement checks and they're gonna start pulling that money out. All right, and then you've got a much large, a much smaller, I mean much smaller group of people who are working and paying into the system. All right, so as before where you might have, you know, 50 people paying into the system uh, to take care of just you know one or a handful of people who are getting retired who are retire getting retirement money paid to them all right when baby boomers retire that's going to turn upside down and you've got this large number um, you know you may have like two or three or four people paying into the system for every person who's withdrawing from the system and since they are uh, corrupt government officials have been uh, spending that money all this long instead of saving it. Um, that money, uh, the math is just not going to work. And when baby boomers retire, <clears throat> um, what, uh, what, and which is happening right now, baby boomers are, as I said, thousands of baby boomers are retiring every single day now, all right? Um, so the, and the problem is getting worse each year, and this is one of the problems that we're seeing with our economy right now. This is not the only uh, problem that's going on with our economy, but this is a, this is a large part of it, and this is a part that we could see back in the '80s. All right, and that is they're not going to have the money to pay uh, for the retirement um, of the baby boomers. All right, there's just going to be too much money. Um, to be handled by the, the smaller workforce has come, that has come along after the baby boomers. <clears throat> All right, so that's going to be a problem. So what can the government do um, when that problem gets here? All right, they can just default um, and just tell, you know, tell people, well, we're not going to pay out Social Security. Sorry, the system is bankrupt. We're just going to shut it down, um, and you guys are on your own now. And of course, that isn't going to work. Baby boomers are a large group of people. Most of them vote. Uh, and no politician is going to do that. All right. Uh, of course, there are other things that they could do. They could just cut your benefits. Um, they could, um, 
Uh, but it's not enough. They just can't cut it enough. The problem is uh, so huge. And they have done these things. They can tax your Social Security benefits. Are all of these things they've talked about doing and they are doing, but it's, it's just not enough. It's not nearly enough. All right. Another thing that they can do is, yes, they can pay the money that they promised, but they can pay it in devalued dollars. In other words, when we paid a dollar into uh, Social Security, that dollar would have bought, say, a loaf of bread, or actually, uh, that dollar would have bought, you know, maybe two or three loaves of bread. All right, when we get our dollar back from the government, when we retire, all right, that dollar won't even buy a half a loaf of bread. Well, we still eat the same amount of bread that we were eating before, um, and um, but and so we just don't have the standard of living that we had before because we are just we're working with devalued dollars, or in other words, dollars that don't go as far. Um, and it's easy for a government to do this because we're on a complete fiat money system now. Or what that means is our money is not backed by gold or silver or anything else. All right, and which means that they can just create um, as many of these fiat paper dollars um, as they want to create. All right, the problem with just creating more and more dollars is that whenever you create additional dollars, then you have you create more dollars in the system who are chasing the same number of goods. All right, that is the very de definition of inflation. And uh, part of the dumbing down of the population right now is obscuring what the definition of inflation is. They don't want the American people to understand this. Back in, I think, the 1940s or sometimes, uh, sometime uh, back uh, during that time period, Henry Ford said, uh, if Americans understood the banking system, and I'm talking about the banking system essentially that was developed in this country after 1913, the uh, Federal Reserve Act, which uh, founded the Federal, Federal Reserve. But Henry Ford said if Americans understood how our banking system really worked, there would be revolution in the streets tomorrow. So it pays the government to keep people ignorant about what's going on uh, because then when we have this huge inflation that is occurring, the government, which is complete fault of the government, their irresponsible handling of the money, uh, the, they are not going to accept responsibility. They're going to point over there and say, oh, and it's the unions, or you know, it's this group over here, or it's the Russians, or it's the Chinese, or it's, just, it's greedy, it's capitalism, and it's the greed of uh, capitalism. And of course, all of that is just completely BS. It's just, it's just irresponsible uh, government officials that has created um, inflation. But they're never going to admit to it because as Henry Ford said, there would be revolution in the streets tomorrow. All right, now today that they have complete control over the major media outlets, they can, which is a major source of uh, dumbing down of Americans, uh, and they can ensure that Americans don't understand what inflation is. But if you look at an old dictionary, um, say you get a dictionary 100 years ago, or not even 100 year, years ago, maybe 50 years ago, and you look up inflation, um, the definition is uh, different from the definition in a, in a typical dictionary that you would pick up today. All right, today uh, the definition of inflation would be basically, in most cases, rising prices, all right? Now, when you say rising prices, you're not explaining, okay, well, what caused uh, the rise, the rising prices? All right, if you look at an old dictionary, all right, then you're more likely to see a definition uh, like this. Um, inflation is essentially the creation of excess money so that there is more money chasing the same number of goods um, which causes rising prices. So according to the true definition of inflation, 
rising prices is a result of inflation. It is not inflation, but they have us so dumbed down now to where when they, when they say, you know, inflation today, people are just thinking rising prices. No, that's not what inflation really is. What inflation is, is the creation of excess money. Again, fiat money, not backed by anything, which means that the government is unlimited in the amount of money that they can create. Uh, so it's unlimited amount of um, inflation that they create. And by the way, it's, uh, just a little side note here, it's no coincidence that the, Fe the uh, Federal Reserve Act was, was, uh, was passed in 1913, which is the same year that the IRS was formed. Um, and um, the whole purpose, people don't realize this, but from the start, the whole purpose of the IRS and collecting uh, income tax from the American people was to hedge off uh, some of the inflation. In other words, to hide some of the inflation from their excess um, money creation. And how does it do that? Again, when they create all this excess money, you have more goods chasing the same, I mean, more dollars chasing the same number of goods. All right, so if you can just like suck some of those dollars out of the system, in other words, take money from people, giving them less money to spend, because when people have more money to spend, more dollars chasing the same number of goods causes prices to go up, all right? If you can suck out <clears throat> some of those excess dollars that the government has created, then that means the people have less money to spend. And that's one of the reasons right now that we are just seeing taxation just going through the roof. All right, now there are other reasons for that to occur too. Uh, mainly it's, it all boils down to just uh, greed uh, on the part of government officials and also their cronies, the bankers and other corporations who feed off of the, the people using the government to extract money from the people. Uh, but that's what taxation is all about. Um, that's why in 1913 the IRS was formed in order to be, have a, put a mechanism in effect that could suck out some of those excess dollars that were created by um, the uh, Federal Reserve, the Treasury Department, and the government. All right, now our, where we are today is we're at a point now to where we're seeing decrease devaluation of the dollar. All right, they are devaluate, devaluing the dollar mainly just by creating excess dollars. Again, the more dollars you create, the less each individual dollar is worth. Or in other words, you're cutting the buying power of each dollar that's already out there. When you create additional dollars, all right, the buying power of every other dollar out there decreases slightly. All right, they are creating billions of dollars every single month of additional money. This money primarily is just given to the bankers, uh, the central bankers, all right, who are already billionaires and trillionaires. Um, and the reason for that is just because uh, these billionaires in the bank, you know, uh, buy off our government of officials who are just nothing but whores. Um, and, and they will they all sell out the American people for just ridiculously small amounts of money just to ensure that they remain in power. All right, and all this money is funneled into the banks and then that allows the banks to manipulate the markets like they are doing today. It just it gives them um, the, the money in order to buy, uh, buy derivatives and buy stocks. Uh, and when you have stocks and derivatives that are, that are falling in value, uh, then they come in and they start buying them in order to bring the price back up again. Or in, in other words, in order to artificially support the, uh, the price. Now the problem is that is an unsustainable um, act um, and it's just kicking the can further down the road. Each year that they do that, they just kick the can further down the road. And we're reaching the point now where they can't kick it uh, any further. Everything that's unsustainable eventually has to come to an end. All right, and what we're seeing now is we're seeing the end of the dollar. 
All right. Uh, the dollar right now, uh, we're, compared to the dollar, you know, prior to like the 1970s, uh, the dollar is worth about two cents. In other words, the dollar will buy, um, well, maybe about a nickel compared to the 70s. Uh, the dollar compared to the dollar back prior to 1913 will buy about uh, two or three cents worth of goods. In other words, uh, you go back last um, last century, early part of last century, and the um, and also the 1800s. You look at uh, American before. You look at American coinage, and you see uh, you find a, a penny. A penny was about this size. It's about this thick, uh, and it was solid copper. And what it was is it was one cent worth of copper. All right, and that was that's called honest money or hard money. Uh, just like our quarters were made out of silver, a quarter was 25 cents worth of silver, a half dollar was 50 cents worth of silver, uh, a dollar was a silver dollar, and it was a dollar's worth of silver. And those uh, coins were 90% silver, and that was real money, and that's something we don't have now. What we have now is strictly paper fiat money that's not backed by anything. Okay, but I want to get back to um, the subject of this video. Well, which is cryptocurrencies. All right, and I apologize for going way off on that tangent about the uh, history of money um, in the United States, uh, but it's important that you understand that concept to understand what I'm going to be saying about cryptocurrencies. All right, but first let me explain this. All right, how do you protect yourself from a devaluing dollar or dollar that's losing um, its value? Um, as I was saying before, back up prior to uh, 1913, um, uh, the dollar today will buy about uh, about two or three cents worth of um, goods back um, compared to the dollar um, in, in 1913, and about a nickel's worth of goods prior, uh, compared to the dollar in uh, uh, prior to say 19 uh, 1970s. All right. <clears throat> but, um, oh, I introduced um, the large cent. I said it's one cent worth of copper. And at that same time, there were coins, that people don't, uh, most people don't know this, there were coins uh, in circulation called half cents. And what they were is they were big too, but they were half the size of a large cent. They were large, thick, uh, uh, half cent coins that were, um, uh, contained half cent worth of copper. All right. <clears throat> now compare that to the cents that we have today and this, the uh, pennies that we have today are not even copper. They're zinc with um, uh, copper coating on them. All right. So just like they have devalued our silver money, which contain 90% silver, and now our, our silver money contains no silver. Uh, it's just silver colored because it contains nickel. And that's how quarters, dimes, and, and, and um, half dollars today, which have no silver in them. All right, this is all part of the dollar, dollar devaluation process. Um, and, when, and this is why our money now is no longer backed by silver, it's just strictly uh, fiat. Now it's, it still costs money to make these coins, of course, uh, but it doesn't, doesn't cost them anything to make all these dollars that they're creating now, because these dollars are creating now, they don't even have to print them. Most of the dollars they're creating now are just digits that they put um, in in bank accounts, primarily just digits they put in the bank accounts of the large bankers. All right. Now, how do you protect yourself? How do you protect your money? Your money's sitting in the bank. All right. The do with inflation, uh, right now inflation is not too bad, although they're uh, they're hiding it. It's worse than it looks like. Um, and one way they're hiding it um, is um, uh, you go buy your box of crackers and it contains 12 ounces and you go back to the store a week later and that same size box if you read what it says on it it can instead of 12 ounces it now contains 10 ounces all right it still has the same price on it but now you know packages are getting smaller so that is so that so people don't notice the the price tag shock uh, when they do that another thing they do which is really 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 big people don't realize this is going on it's one reason why americans are so sick is they're decreasing the quality of the foods that we get 
Um, I used to, back um, I don't really eat sweets um, today much other than fruit, but I used to, years ago, like uh, Fig Newtons, um, and Fig Newtons, uh, these Fig Bar cookies, they had like real figs in them. Uh, and one day I bought uh, my Fig Newtons, I didn't, I actually don't, didn't buy Fig Newtons, but another brand um, of the Fig Bars, these were not actually the Nabisco Fig Newtons, but another brand. All right, but they, all of them do it. All of them do this. And I was eating these cookies, and I noticed a couple things. I noticed, well, these are sweeter than uh, they normally are. All right, and I looked at the filling in it, and I didn't see very many of the little uh, fig seeds. I mean, used to you look in uh, in one of these fig bars, you saw all of these fig little fig seeds in there because it was real fig fruit. And I looked on the label of these things, and the number one ingredient was corn syrup. So that fig that was in, that fig real fruit that was in those cookies has been replaced by corn syrup. Yes, it may have 5% you know, real fruit in it, 10% real fruit, whereas used to it would have 75% or more real fruit in it. Now it's corn syrup. All right, the same type of thing is going on with all of our foods, and, and that's one reason we're also giving um, tons of GMO foods today. Um, again, it's... Um, they, they produce massive amounts of foods, uh, but much lower quality, although we're still paying the same price for those cookies back when they had real fruit on them. Now we're paying uh, that same price, but now we're getting corn syrup instead of real fruit. All right, and you can watch, watch your products and you'll notice that and just, if you've been around as long as I've been around, I'm in my 60s right now, uh, you, you see a huge, 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 uh, decrease in the quality of the food that we have today compared to what we had in the past. Um, and this is true for any restaurant particularly because restaurants are in competition with each other. They have to keep their prices as low as they can. Uh, the quality of the food, I mean even today if I go to, um, I, I mean I, we don't eat out very often but say on a special occasion, a holiday or something like that, we'll eat out. And I'm talking about even when you go to a nice expensive restaurant the quality of the food there just is not there like it used to be. All right, and this is just all part, another way that inflation has been, been hidden from us. But getting back to inflation, inflation hasn't been so bad right now, or hasn't seemed to be so bad for those reasons, um, but it's going to get worse, and it is getting worse. And every single day now, what we're seeing is we're seeing continued devaluation of the dollar, which, and that's what, um, that's what inflation that's a part of what inflation is because um, as you create more dollars, each dollar becomes worth less, and so the, the value of those dollars um, is, is, is going down. All right, so because when it comes time to pay all these baby boomers, all this retirement they're going to have to pay, pay them, all right, there's no way that they could pay them. These baby boomers, I mean, we used to pay um, in silver, you know, back prior to um, uh, 1964. And even from uh, 65 through 70, half dollars could pay 40% silver. But during uh, a lot of that time, baby boomers were paying into uh, the system. Um, uh, the paper dollars, even when they paid a paper dollar, it represented um, a silver dollar. I mean, you could take that paper dollar and you could exchange it for uh, a silver dollar. So we paid silver into the system. And what we're getting back now is paper money or digital money that is, has no silver in it at all. The pennies don't even have copper in them anymore. They're made out of zinc, all right? And so that is inflation, that's devaluation of the dollar. And as a result, again, as I said, uh, at the risk of repeating myself, um, you know, we take that dollar now, we used to go by to the store, and buy. I remember used to go uh, grocery shopping with my mother as a child, and my mother would spend like, you know, $15 and we'd have this big old bag full of groceries, this, this you know, big old brown paper sack, and she would complain, can you believe that $15 fit in one bag? And today, we go to the grocery store, I can buy $150 worth of food and come walking out of the store with like one or two or two bags. All right, so the dollars that we're getting, you know, don't go as far and when we retire, uh, we're still going to have to eat. We're still going to have to pay our electric bill and all of our other bills, um, buy gasoline, energy bills. 
uh, health bills, whatnot. We're still going to have to pay those things, but now we're not getting, uh, we're getting paid with dollars that aren't worth as much. And, <clears throat> um, and as a result, we're seeing gradual falling in our standard of living. Yes, we're making more money when you look at the number of dollars that we're making, but those dollars don't buy as much. And again, that's part of what inflation is. All right, and that is how they're going to handle baby boomers continued devaluing the dollar. <clears throat> but there's something else going on here, and that's because the dollar is the world's reserve currency. Uh, dollars are held all over the world, and the reason America's fought all these wars that we fought since World War II um, is <clears throat> to prop up the uh, banking system to make sure that people continue using dollars. Uh, we made agreements with uh, Saudi Arabia that we would buy their oil, but um, we made agreement with them that they only would sell their oil for dollars, wouldn't sell it for any other currency. All right, Saddam Hussein came up and he said, uh, I'm going to start selling my oil for um, other currencies, including I'm going to start selling it to China for their currency, and I'm going to start selling it for gold. All right, well, you know the rest of the story. You know what happened to Saddam Hussein. If you look at all the countries that the United States empire has been at war against, the one, all the countries that we're at war against right now that we've been at war against for the last couple of decades, they're all countries who refuse to participate in the central banking system. In other words, they, they're all countries that refuse to have their, their central bank of their country participate with the world's central banking system. And what do we do? We go in, we topple the, um, the leader who often is a democratically uh, elected leader. We go in, we start these re rebellions, support rebels um, that want to overthrow that government. Uh, we go in, assassinate them, whatever. That's, what the, uh, that's the business that the uh, U.S. has been in for decades, and that is um, assassinating leaders who will not participate with the world backing system in order to put in a puppet um, leader who will establish a bank um, that will participate with the banking system. In every single country that we're at war against right now, Syria, Iran is a big one. That's why we're going to go with uh, uh, war with Iran, um, possibly go to war with China and Russia. Um, and, and it's all because um, China and Russia do participate in the world banking system, but they want out. Uh, but anyway, as I said, the United States dollar is the world reserve currency. A lot of countries, as a result, are holding dollars, like China is holding trillions of dollars, uh, Japan is, other countries are, <coughs> Korea, South Korea. <coughs> All right, when, uh, what they're seeing now is they're seeing as Americans are uh, uh, crushing the value of the dollar, then their value of their holdings is decreasing in value. So they want to get those, uh, get rid of those dollars and exchange it for something real like gold. And so what we've been seeing over the last couple of years, we've been seeing China um, buying a lot less dollars and instead taking all those dollars that they have and they're buying gold and stockpiling gold, but they're all not just gold, but they're also buying mines all over the world, real estate, uh, they're building up their infrastructure. They're just trying to get rid of those dollars as fast as they can. All right, but as these countries get rid of those dollars, then you're going to have those dollars are going to come into the market, and of course, more dollars chasing uh, the same number of goods. What is that? That is inflation. All right, and eventually you're going to see the dollar drop in value to where it's worth zero. All right, now how can you protect yourself from that? <clears throat> uh, the money that you have sitting in the bank. Uh, you know, you may still have the same hundred dollars in the bank that you had last year, but with inflation, that hundred dollars is only worth uh, ninety-seven dollars now. And inflation is cumulative each year; uh, it builds on uh, the year before. So your money in your bank is gradually decreasing in value. But even uh, worse than that, though, uh, as the banks are failing, what are they doing? They're they're conducting bail-ins. Uh, where they change the law now to where the money, your money in the bank, is no longer your money. The bank, the money in the bank is now the bank's money. You're just now an investor in that bank. So then, what happens when the bank fails? You, as an investor in that bank, what investor, what the investors do is they lose their investment. All right, and they call that a bail-in. In other words, when the banks fail, you don't get your money back. And we see this happening in other countries around the world, and they're talking about it here. And it's something that's definitely coming here. So one of these days, 
you're going to wake up and you're going to find out that the money that you thought in your bank account was there was just no longer there. I mean, that's what happened in other countries like Greece. Um, and, uh, you know, they just woke up one morning and like, you know, 40% or more, 50% um, of their money was just gone because of the, the, the bail-in. All right. Now, <clears throat> and they can take it all that way. All right. But, uh, so how do you protect yourself from that? And that is uh, you buy real assets. You do what China is doing right now. Uh, you buy, say, gold, silver. All right. These are things that, um, as the dollar decreases in value, these are things that increase in value. And that's the reason right now silver, silver right now is really low at about $17 an ounce. But um, I remember back in the, uh, uh, back a couple of decades ago, silver was like $4 an ounce. All right, so it's gone for, and it was before that, it was even less than that. It's, it's down, it was uh, $2 an ounce. All right, so it's gone from $2 an ounce to like, uh, what, you know, $16, $17 an ounce. And right now it's low. Again, it's been up to close to $50 uh, an ounce. Same with gold. I remember when gold was some um, 200 and something dollars an ounce. You know, now gold is like $1,200 uh, an ounce. All right, so as the value of the dollar decreases, these precious metals increase. And, of course, it's well known that gold and silver are a hedge against inflation. Um, and if you have money and if you're a prepper and you're putting uh, things away uh, preparing for the future um, of course gold and silver hard assets like that are um, a way to protect yourself and I think most of my listeners uh, understand that All right, but getting back to again sorry again for the sidebars but it's really important that you understand these things in order to understand what I'm going to be saying about cryptocurrencies all right, what about cryptocurrencies? So, yeah, cryptocurrencies are a coming thing of, you know, things like Bitcoin, Bitcoins, uh, and, but although there are many, many, many more right now, uh, they look like they're a good investment because they keep going up in price. All right, remember back when the housing prices were going back in price and, you know, your $50,000 house all of a sudden was worth $100,000 and it's worth $200,000 and it's worth $300,000. People were buying houses, uh, buying second houses as investments because the real estate prices are going up, 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 uh, like uh, cryptocurrencies are now. Well, remember what happened. I mean, that's, that was a, um, um, then price, uh, housing prices crashed. If you had been one of the people who decided to get in on that bandwagon toward the end and you pay $300,000 $300, for a house that previously would have been worth $50,000, the price collapses. And now you pay $300,000 for a house that's now worth $50,000. Um, and that's happening again. That, that was the, the housing cra crash. We will have another uh, real estate crash coming up here soon, according to my sources. Um, and my advice, just a little sidebar here, my advice is if you want to buy um, uh, real estate or buy a house, um, I would wait a few years because there's going to be another collapse in the market. Um, and then you're going to be able to buy that house right now you're looking at cost three hundred thousand dollars you might be able to buy it for fifty thousand um, dollars after the next collapse of uh, the real estate uh, prices all right if you buy it right now and you pay the top dollars then when it crashes what do you have you know then you're going to be want, wanting out of your your bank loan a lot of people just walked out of, walked away from these houses uh, because the house that they, they were paying on it they still owed say two hundred thousand dollars on this house and now the house is only worth a hundred thousand so they just walk, walked away. All right, but if you could uh, wait and take advantage of that, then you might be able to buy that $300,000 house for $50,000, maybe even more, depending on how that collapses. But you're not going to be do, able to do that if you don't have money in the bank, right? And if they're, they're taking the money in, in, in your checking account, in your savings account. They're taking that money from you on a daily basis through inflation. That's why uh, uh, another thing that inflation is, is it's a hidden tax. It's a way to tax the people without the people knowing they're being taxed. Again, government uh, officials love doing that kind of stuff because they love keeping people dumbed down and ignorant of what they're really doing. And again, if the American people understood how the banking system worked, there'd be revolution in the streets tomorrow. All right, now what we're, what we're seeing now though is uh, getting back to cryptocurrencies is we're seeing a lot of people who are buying cryptocurrencies um, like uh, people have traditionally bought precious metals like gold and silver. In other words, the dollar's collapsing. These things are increasing in value. 
So they want to jump in and turn their dollars into something that's increasing in value. The dollar is something that's collapsing in value. They want to turn it into something that's increasing in value, okay? All right, the problem is cryptocurrencies are not real, okay? They're like fiat money. There's nothing backing them at all. Cryptocurrencies are nothing but digits in a computer. And I know there's all kinds of ways, you know, to protect people um, from, um, you know, losing, uh, losing their money in, uh, in cryptocurrencies if the system goes down. But really think about this, all right? If there is um, uh, a major disaster, it could be anything, anything that would bring the uh, internet down. Uh, and also, uh, it could be done purposefully. Um, and in other words, the internet could just be um, brought under government control, which they're increase, they are increase, increasingly doing it. And eventually, the internet, I think, is going to be under complete control. Uh, but just say uh, there's an EM, uh, uh, electromagnetic pulse uh, from the sun or there's an EMP attack from uh, some rogue nation knocks out the electrical system um, of the country, okay? Where are your crypto uh, currencies? Where are they going to be? All right, they're going to disappear. All right, now you, uh, you could say, well, you know, no, I mean, I've got, uh, you know, the record of these uh, numbers and, and everything. All right, let me just see, let's, let me see you take that to the bank, or let me just let me see you buy food with those cryptocurrencies. Okay, they're going to disappear because they are not real. All right, this is real. This is a 1964 half dollar. It is 90 percent silver. All right, there is a saying that I hear um, some um, um, economists say, and that is. If you can't hold it in your hand, then you don't own it. All right, and that applies to the money that's in your bank. Uh, that applies to the dollar. That applies to cryptocurrencies. And you cannot hold cryptocurrencies in your hand. If you cannot hold it in your hand, it is not, you do not own it. It can be taken away from you. Um, I'm afraid that all of this uh, cryptocurrency stuff that's going on right now, um, what I'm saying is I'm seeing a lot of people who would be buying gold and silver to protect themselves from this inflation and this collapsing dollar. Those people are now buying cryptocurrencies. And that's uh, another way that they are manipulating the price of uh, gold and silver down. And right now, there's a lot of manipulation going on with gold and silver. That's not the primary way they manipulate it. The primary way they manipulate it is by selling short into the markets. All right, I'm not going to get into that. It's proven that they do that. Uh, it's absolutely no doubt. It is completely uh, proven, admitted. They've even paid fines on it. Problem is, when they make bankers pay fines, uh, the bankers have made like, um, you know, a hundred billion dollars off of this illegal act. And then when they get caught and, may, or, and they pay a fine, their fine is like a hundred million dollars. Right, and Americans think, wow, a hundred million dollar fine. Yeah, that's the way to get them bankers, make them pay. But you don't realize they made a hundred billion dollars on that deal and they paid a hundred million dollar fine. Yeah, right, that's just the cost of doing business and that's a very, very cheap way of doing business for bankers too, but that's the way our system works. But what I'm saying is I'm afraid a lot of people are putting their wealth into these cryptocurrencies um, if, uh, and instead of putting it in real things like gold and silver, all right? Now, uh, so do not use cryptocurrencies in any other way other than uh, just you can do some speculation in the market by putting some of your money into cryptocurrencies you know you can if you like, want to trade that uh, that market uh, you think it's going up don't put all of your eggs in that basket okay if you want to set aside a little bit of money that you can afford to lose all of it all right, go ahead and play with that market, but do not consider uh, cryptocurrencies as being um, protection um, for you know for a dollar collapse. It is not collection. When the dollar collapses, you're, they're probably going to get rid of all.
cryptocurrencies one way or another, bring the internet completely under control. Uh, but I'm, a, I'm afraid that the cryptocurrency, that, that whole deal with the cryptocurrencies, I'm afraid is a means of getting people, not just Americans, but worldwide, Chinese are buying cryptocurrencies like crazy, or Chinese people are. Or they're just being sucked into this deal just like everybody else. Um, the Chinese government is buying gold. They're stockpiling gold, right? But the Chinese people, because it's hard for them to get some of these um, uh, hard assets in China. It's not as easy for a Chinese person to walk into a corn store and buy a gold corn or silver corn um, as it is for uh, Americans to do that. So they, they're putting their money wherever they can get just get their money into uh, out of the dollar and into something that is um, increasing in value. But all of what if all of these dollars go into these cryptocurrencies and then all of a sudden they pull the plug on it and all this money disappears, right? Well, that's kind of like the IRS that came along to suck up the excess money out of the system in order to control inflation. And they had to control inflation because the only way the government can continue their counterfeiting of money or to continue to, to print you know, fake fiat money not backed by anything, um, they're limited in the amount of that they can do only by inflation, all right? So they have to keep inflation under control. And again, that's why the IRS has found one way to can keep inflation under control is to suck money out of the system, allowing them to continue this process. What if they, they suck all of this money out of the system into cryptocurrencies, right? Now, if people were buying gold and silver instead of cryptocurrencies, then what you would see is you would see gold and silver prices increasing like they should be increasing right now, and people would really be protecting themselves. All right, if you want to speculate a little bit in cryptocurrencies, that's fine. Go ahead. Um, don't consider, and also cryptocurrencies have the convenience of it's easier to spend um, in a lot of cases than, say, gold or silver. All right, to spend gold or silver, you either have to take your silver coin um, to the store or to your neighbor. Your neighbor may have eggs. You give them a silver dime, or get you a dozen eggs. All right, so you can, you can spend it that way. And, uh, and there are a lot of people now, I mean, I, the fella that I bought eggs uh, from originally, I never mentioned him anything about precious metals, but he told me on his own, he said, I also take silver for my eggs too, if you ever want to pay in silver. He didn't even know that I was a silver bug or a gold bug at all. Uh, but um, out here in the Missouri Ozarks, you'll find out a lot of people um, will do barter and barter uh, with gold and silver is uh, definitely has always been a preferred, you can barter with other things too of course, but gold and silver has always been a preferred uh, way to barter because when they get that gold and silver they know they can always take that over to the next guy where they, who has something that they need and they know that gold and silver uh, is easily exchangeable for that. All right, right now it's easy to exchange these paper fiat dollars, but I'm talking about at a time when this dollar collapses and these paper dollars that you have uh, are worth more as toilet paper um, than the art going out there and buying goods. Cryptocurrencies have the convenience of easy, easily spending your money online, all right? Uh, it's harder to um, spend one of these silver coins um, online. All right, now, in order to spend the silver coin, again, if your neighbor grows eggs and they don't, they don't understand silver, they don't take silver right now, it's still easy to take these coins you know, to your coin shop. You take it in there open you know, six days a week. Anytime you take it in there, exchange your silver coin for you know, whatever currency is currently used, you know, if it's a dollar or whatever, get you some paper dollars. Take that if your neighbor is still accepting paper dollars. So this, uh, these gold and silver coins, they can be spent. You just, at this time, you might have to, to or you most likely will have to convert it into the current currency or the dollar uh, in order to spend it. That's okay, I mean, that's just, it's a little step that you have to put in there. It's a small price to pay in order to protect your money from a collapsing uh, currency, collapsing value. All right, so, I advise people, and if you want to play with cryptocurrencies a little bit, you want to play with them and, because they're an easy way to uh, spend money online. Uh, if you want to invest in it just as, as speculation, uh, don't put 
all of your eggs. Don't even put most of your eggs. Don't even put a lot of your eggs in that basket. You know, if you have some extra money that you don't need, you can put this money. It's like when you go to the casino, which I'm not recommending, which I don't do. Uh, but I, I know that there are people who, who do gamble responsibly, um, if you can call it that, uh, who they, they say uh, they get their paycheck and they, they say, okay, well, I can afford, I got to pay my bills, I can afford to put this much money aside, I can go to the casino and I can, uh, you know, lose that money. I can afford to lose that money. And they know they're going to eventually lose it. All right. Uh, or they should know if they understand how casinos work. All right. But the problem with people uh, who are gambling, of course, is they go beyond that. And, and then they, go, they lose that money and say, oh, well, my luck's got to change. They go to the ATM machine. Then they take out money that was meant to pay their uh, mortgage or to pay their electric bill or something like that. And then they gamble with that and lose that. That's where the problem comes in, of course. But to people who gamble responsibly, if there's such a thing, uh, take this amount of money and say, I can lose this amount of money. This is the cost of, of Saturday night's entertainment. Uh, I can, you know, take this $200, go out to the casino and lose it all. And that's, you know, I've had fun. That's my Saturday night entertainment. All right. Well, that's the way your cryptocurrency sh should be, too. If you want to even delve with that market. Um, set aside a little bit that you can lose. Um, play with it uh, as you know an investment just just know that any day you could wake up in any day and that money is just going to be gone and then eventually that is what's going to happen to all cryptocurrencies uh, in my estimation at some point it's all going to be gone they're letting everybody put all their excess dollars into these things and just what better it's like it's like having people just put all their uh, dollars into a paper shredder. Here, you know, come over here, this shredder, just feed your dollars into this paper shredder right here. And of course, what are they doing? They're taking dollars out of circulation, which helps control inflation. Um, and, and so that allows them to counterfeit even more money because they can counterfeit the money without um, paying the cost of inflation because they're, they're creating all this paper money, and then what are people doing? They're feeding it through the uh, paper shredder. All right, so yes, cryptocurrencies is the new thing. Um, if that's how we're gonna do business online in the future, then that's great, I got no problem with that. I love uh, the, you know, the an anonymity of it, the privacy of it, uh, the lack of control. I think, I think all those things are gonna come into the system eventually. All right, right now it's, it's the Wild West. I think they might be doing that just to get people sucked into the system so that then they can destroy their wealth or whether they even don't do it on purpose, uh, but instead it just happens because of, um, you know, problems with the internet. The internet, um, we lose internet, we lose electricity. I mean, if, if we lose electricity, we are going to lose the internet. I mean, there's no doubt about that. All right, so my, uh, uh, what I say for cryptocurrencies um, is don't mess with them, uh, thinking that you're protecting yourself from a collapsing economy and a collapsing currency. If you want to protect yourself from a collapsing currency, if you want to protect yourself from inflation, because these things are coming. Baby boomers are retiring. They, the only way that the government can get out of the trillions of dollars of debt that they have right now and the hundreds, hundred trillion dollars of unfunded liabilities, and that's what, unfund, that's what Social Security is. It is an unfunded liability. And our government right now is uh, $20 trillion in debt. But if you consider, that doesn't count Social Security and, uh, and uh, other things like that, pension plans for government employees and all that kind of stuff. Um, if you throw in unfunded liabilities, it's over a hundred thousand, I mean, over a hundred trillion dollars in debt. It's impossible, impossible to ever pay that back. And they're not even getting close to it. They're all, the best that they can do is just slow down the increase um, in the 
um, slow down the rate of increase um, in the um, um, in the debt. And no one's talking about balancing the budget, or they're talking about it, but no one is serious about trying to balance uh, the budget in America. All they're talking about is decreasing the rate of the growth of the national debt. And it's, um, there's no chance that that's going to be paid back. It's, they're going to default on it. And the way they're going to default on it is driving the dollar down to zero, which it all fits their o overall agenda because they're going to put us on uh, one, one world government, one world religion, one world bank, and one world currency. They'll bring about um, world war in order to hide the economic collapse and to get America's attention off of it. They'll, bring us, they'll take us to world war with uh, Russia and China. Um, and they'll say Russia and China is responsible for the collapse of the dollar. That's what they're going to do. You think these politicians are going to actually accept responsibility for their crimes? All right, it's not going to happen. All right, they're going to blame somebody else, and I'm just hoping that you're going to be smart enough to know who the real guilty parties are um, and, and make them pay, rather than supporting these ridiculous wars. Uh, all the wars that we have now, all wars, are bankers' wars, and all the wars of the American empire that's going on right now, they're all bankers' wars. They're all wars for the bankers. These wars are not for us. These wars are to eliminate us, but they're all to support the bankers. All right, so my advice with cryptocurrencies, my advice in protecting yourself from a declining dollar, a dollar that eventually is going to be worth nothing, which we see, we see this account happening as rising prices is what we're going to see. When the dollar devalues, what we see is we see a rising prices. That's uh, devaluation of the dollar. For the average person, they see that as rising prices. With regard to cryptocurrencies, and even with regard to the dollars that are in your bank account, remember this. If you're not holding it in your hand, you don't own it. This is Survival Doc. Reminding you, be prepared or be prepared to be pleased.